Hello, everybody. There we go. <laughs> Welcome to Workshop. Hello. Hello. How is everybody this week? Guys, it's been crazy. Mm -hmm. Welcome, everyone. But give you <laughs> move over. Personal space. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I don't want to be. Why? Why are you doing this? Come over there. Oh, I'm gonna move up. No. <laughs> For God's sake. Anyway, we're going to be um, doing some basics today. Uh, we're going to be covering world management, tools and resource folders, avatar model importing from Unity packages. Um, we're going to cover external learning resources, methods of creation, and session moderation and permissions, which is user safety. Mm -hmm. All things new users should well, good oh. for them to know. Kembaro, thank you for wow. the uh, gifted subs. Wow, there is so thank many so subs. Much. Actually, let's go over all these. Let's see what we got because blur my neck. So we've got Conduit there with the tier one. Uh, Elmino with the tier one. Suffixia so, TTV with the Twitch <sighs> Prime. Yeah. Oh God, Sharp Mare as well. Oh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just know I, <laughs> I need to actually make that Twitch chat disappear in front of us. Oh yeah. And I need to be careful because I have two different blue tooltips in my folder, one of which is cursed. Ah, <laughs> uh, you got it. Okay, that's good. Well, yeah, you can't do it. Oh, yeah, it's, you're the one yep, who's the camera up there. Vermin of Plague, thank you for the subs. So... As I say, what we'll start off with, we'll start off with, as I say, the world management stuff. Which we'll get probably, as I say, Ryuv and Aegis to go over. And then mm -hmm. once we're done with that, we... Oh, I just knocked something over. We'll go into Q&A as well later on and you can pitch us some questions. We can try and answer as best we can. Yeah, thanks for all this, um... Pardon, folks. Yeah, it's very nice to have you all here, and this is the highest amount of uh, viewers that we've gotten here on this uh, so far. Yeah, so. I, I couldn't hear Fruits then, awesome. he was so muffled. What? Can you say that one more time, please, Fruits? The answer is always seven. The answer is always seven. Seven. Yes. How, can I do it? Yeah, you can't. No, my, my thumb just folded in when I wanted to do a seven with my hand. I don't have enough fingers to show seven. <laughs> what? Is the seven? I think there's a seven. There we go. Seven. Oh, I best switch myself to busy because I just got a notification there. An invite to something. Hmm. Okay, so. Yep, good idea. Save yourself to busy. Ravi has the camera. Hey, Ravi. Alrighty. So, oh, yeah. yes, so the first thing, let's, let me bring this over here. So the first thing we want to cover is world management. And that is the simple fact that you can actually be in, in Neos, um, unlike other platforms and other games in general, you can actually be in multiple places at once here in Neos, uh, multiple worlds at once. When you're in a world, you're present, but in all the other worlds that you're currently not in, you show up as as a ghost or or a shell, or as some people call it, looks like uh, some kind of an away material that our avatar looks like. Here, for example, A just now just went to another world, and now he's back. You can only really be present in one world, but you can be in multiple worlds at a time, and we wanted to bring up world management, because if you go world hopping and you're, you're going from one world to another, you're still in all of these worlds until you manually disconnect yourself or that session closes if you're not the host. Um, a good uh, example to explain how this works is think of like a uh, tabs on a web browser. You have all those open. You technically have all those like websites still open and you can swap between them at will and you can always close them all as well too. That's a fantastic analogy, yes. And you can close worlds. There's a few ways that you can close worlds. You can exit your current world that you're in if you look on your dashboard, there's a close world button by default on the top of your dashboard. Double clicking that will close the world you're currently in. Now, if you would prefer to close a world that 
you're currently in but not focused to, if you look on the World Browser tab, any of the worlds in this list that have that red X on the top right corner um, are worlds that you're currently in that you can either focus back to or, in the case with the red X here, close and disconnect. And it's I, I definitely recommend if you're if you don't plan on being in a certain session uh, anymore, uh, but you're still in it, definitely close out to save yourself some performance and to free up that session with user slots, letting other people join as well. Do you have anything to add on to that, Ages? You know, as well, which... I'll just just let me make you a note here it. as well. Yeah. Is the sessions that you're in will always be at the top as well. So they'll mm, always yes. have it be at the top with the red X on them. There is, as I say, we'll cover facets in a moment once Aegis has gone on to what he wants to say. You went over what I was going to go over, so. Yeah, there yeah. is actually a really good facet made by Probable Prime. Oh, yes, that facet is amazing. Which is in his public folder, and it is called the World You're In facet, which goes on your dashboard, which, as I say here, this is basically a small version of these for only worlds that you're in. And then from here, as I say, you can click your X in there and you can close that world. You can also click around them and focus the world that you want to be in. Super handy. I personally <laughs> use that all the time. Choo-choo, do we have a hype train? <laughs> Choo-choo! <laughs> but yeah, we can... There we go. I've just put it on, dash I've just put it on this dashboard. There we go. Hmm. And all your worlds will show up there with that facet, for example. But you can always, of course, access them in the World tab as well. You don't necessarily need the facet to uh, to allow you to manage your focus worlds and close them and such. Exactly. I think that really much covers world management. So, let's see. Another thing, another common pain point that I think users that should be covered for new users is that Neos has a variety of voice modes that you can switch between at any time. Uh, and by default, if you look at the top left of your dashboard, you should see this facet here. And this shows you your various voice modes as well as it shows you your voice volume as you speak. And from left to right, these voice modes are mute, whisper, normal, shout, and broadcast. Mute is a toggle, which allows you to mute yourself if you feel the need to. Um, you can, and it actually works two ways. You can either click it directly onto mute and then click another to mute off. However, if you're on another voice mode and you click on mute and click it again, it will automatically send you back to that, so you don't have to worry about it. Oops. Whisper is when you're in when you're in the whisper voice mode, uh, a sphere will appear around you, and anyone within that radius will be able to uh, hear you. And sounds out, all sounds are muted while you're in Whisper, except for the users who are also within your Whisper bubble. <laughs> it dampens any audio outside it. <laughs> so, you can hear me now, and if... I can't hear him. Make another note, Ryuvi, it's not just a sphere. <laughs> Yes, so it's also a ring, but you still have to be inside of it to hear the user. Mm -hmm. Especially useful in crowded spaces and yeah. when you're trying to have it's, like a single conversation. Yes, it's great to have either a conversation with a user in a crowded session, or if you just need a moment to think with lots of noise going around, you can go into Whisper and that will mute down everything oh, for a little way, while. You can actually click on these buttons and they won't affect you. Just to, go, oh, just to show which mode you are highlighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moving on, normal mode is normal talking. It's as we all are now, and if you're close to someone, they're louder. If you're further away, they're quieter, as per usual. Now, the, the, these two here, folks tend to get confused, but shout is the yellow option here, and this means you can be heard from much further away. So if you're, say, on a very large, large world, or you're working on a large world, then shout is very useful in that case. It's... Oh, my Discord just restarted for some dark. reason. I need to kill my Discord. We're probably on um, broadcast, so... We're all on shout at the moment. 
So by default, everyone in this world is on shout right now, so that you'll always be able to hear them. But I, what I will do is I will literally just switch every... I'm going to switch Ravy back to normal and Aegis back to normal. You're on normal voice modes now. So whatever testing, voice testing. mode... Hello. Yeah. So whatever voice mode you two set yourself to will now go through onto stream. Okay. So no if I... Shout broadcast and no matter where i'm at in the world you can hear me okay. and that's what broadcast does it l basically is a 2 2d audio yes 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 which that is the next option actually in our list which is broadcast which if you are visible to the other player in the world you can be heard anywhere regardless of how far you are where you are etc good for Lots of things, actually. Announcements and large worlds, yes. too. But generally, if you're wanting to have a normal conversation, normal is better than shout. Also, Otherwise, everyone's going to tell you, get out of shout. Yeah. Also, if in some worlds, they actually restrict the ability to use shout and broadcast. Mm -hmm. Which is restricted to builders as well. So, only builders can shout, only builders can broadcast. And I think that's a default on most worlds. If someone is not a builder. Yes, I believe so. And like other world permissions, those can be changed uh, to suit your world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, that brings us very nicely onto world permissions. Mm hmm. So world permissions over here, if in the sessions tab of your dashboard, you can see we have all of the various settings and such for the world including its name you can get its the current session orb uh, so that you can hand it around and let people join you can adjust the maximum users add a description save it and etc but more importantly on this page over here we have the who can join this world list which this allows you to choose who can currently join your world ranging from anyone to just registered users to Private, completely private, and the only way to get people into your world when it's set to private, in this case, is to invite them. Yep. Contacts is uh, you and people who you have added to your contacts list can join. Contacts Plus is contacts of contacts can join your session. Yep, this is also something good to point out, too. Don't show on this mm. list basically mm -hmm. hides the world from the session browser so that say if you want like a context plus world but also hidden from basically the public session browser and you want people to invite their friends over into your world it kind of has like a in a way its own type of private instance in a way too yes and it's also useful for having a world be available such that if it's set to contacts plus or anyone then even if the session is don't show in sessions list you people who are in the session can also invite people to the session not just the host mm -hmm. you, you have you find control over who can join your session in this case listed here also is the auto afk kick whether it's enabled or not and how long it takes for that to take into effect Basically, if a user is not focused into a world for longer than the amount you have set here in minutes, by default it's five, then they will be auto-kicked from the world, freeing up a user slot so other users can join. Now for world creators, if you're actively working on the world and you want to be extra sure that you don't lose your progress, there is an auto-save feature as well, including a interval minutes. So every set amount of minutes you have set there, if you have that enabled, it will save the world for you. And by default, we have cleanup unused assets enabled as well, so that if you're working and building and sp spawning things out and deleting things, then the world will automatically clean up any assets in the world that it doesn't need every set amount of time. And I think that sums up. Is there anything that I missed here, would you say? All right. Well, next up, we'll notice on the sessions tab that there is actually three sub tabs up at the top settings users and permissions we're going to move on to the next tab which is the users tab and what the users tab shows you is a current list of users who are in the session including uh, important badges for the user their name you also have a local volume slider for the user so if a user is being too is being too loud or they're too quiet you can adjust their volume locally for you 
You can also mute a user. You can jump to a user if that is an enabled option, which what that means is it will teleport you directly to the user if you can't find them. And if you have permissions in the world to do so, be it, uh, I believe, default permissions moderator and above yes, allow you to respawn users? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can respawn a user, you can silence them, and naturally, for administrative and moderative purposes, you can kick users and ban users from a session. You will always, from here. always, always have the option as well to do a respawn for yourself. Yes. From that menu. That is a... No. If I recall correctly, that is a global mute. The silence? I yeah, the silence so. is a global mute. This is a local mute. This only mutes, like, a user for yourself. This will mute the user for the whole world. Yes. Or everyone else. Good distinction. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, as I say, we'll go over these badges here as well. As I say, you've got the crown badge on Eevee here, for example. That means they are the world host. And this one is a very interesting one that you will only see selectively, and that means they are a headless host, which means it's actually a server you're connected to, not an actual user session that's hosted on their computer. And then mm -hmm. also, as Ryuvi said, this is all also a very good place to check people's badges because I always say to people, don't check um, the badges. Uh, we'll check the badges above their heads, but... Don't take them as gospel, because they can be faked. Mm -hmm. So always look in the user list. Yes, the, the, these badges here are always true, and they're usually decently important too. Like, yeah. for instance, whether someone is a moderator or not. Yeah, and Huey Louie, yeah. Um, you'll notice throughout streams, if you ever see me on streams, I change my avatar quite frequently. I'm an avatar showcaser. So, I like showing off avatars. Hmm. But yeah, that's um, as I say, that's the users list, and then mm -hmm. the, then we get into the nitty gritty, which is next permissions. up is session permissions. And from this page, you can not only control the permission level of each user, but you can control um, how these permission levels are granted uh, by default when a user joins. And in a world. Taking one step back, there are five permission levels going from the most restrictive, which is spectator, all the way up to administrator. Um, and the four settings we have up top here are default anonymous, which is if an unregistered user joins your session, then the highlighted item, they will be assigned to that role. And this applies to all of these. Visitors are users who join your session who are not in your contacts list. Contacts are friends of yours, contacts, whatever they may be, and the host is assigned their own role too. Now, one thing to note, if you created a world, as the creator of the world, you have full permission always. But if you have your world accessible and published and uh, open for anyone else to host their own session of it, then the host permission applies, and you can restrict that if you so desire. Yeah, as a world you... builder as well, hmm? there is another thing you can do actually. So say I'm say I'm building this world and I want to make it so that people can't build in here when I publish this world. I can switch everyone to moderator, all the two settings, and when I save it, then afterwards the default host user will only ever get moderate permission or below and cannot edit the world. Yes. I've seen a few worlds use that. Yeah, there is quite a few of them, um, especially, as I say, some of the um, worlds, and I'm, as I say, I don't name drop, but as I say, there is quite a few worlds created by a certain creator that uh, do not allow builder permissions because they use um, paid assets from the Unity store, for example. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, by default, it will always be the host has admin, and then your friends will have builder. Mm -hmm. And generally for, and this is a bit of a self-moderation uh, thing that we provide here, is if a user is having, if you're having an issue with a user and they're being disruptive, you can always reduce their permission level to guest or even spectator, and that will limit their ability to cause potential harm or whatever in the okay. session. So we've just had a question here. May I get a quick description of Builder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so as a builder, I could put on a developer tip, I could spawn out inspectors, I can do everything with a world. 
Now what I'm going to do is if um I'm Ravy, can you knock me down to guest please? Yes. Let's see. You are a guest. Right, I'm now a guest. I now cannot equip this dev tip. And if Ryuvi spawns out an inspector for me, I cannot. I can't. I yeah. I physically cannot do anything with this at all. I can't use it. I can't close it. Nothing. So as a guest, I cannot interfere with anything in this world. However, I can come over here and grab these screenshots and still do stuff with them. But if Ryuvi now sets me to a spectator... You're a spectator? I am now a spectator. I can't do anything. I can't interact. I can't grab things. I can't grab this object. I can't do anything at all. Mm -hmm. Now... To add on top of this, there is a workshop Wednesday that we have already um, previously done on session permissions in a more uh, advanced kind of stuff where you can even limit users' avatars. If you want to, say, spawn them in a template avatar for like a game world and you have like a avatar set with like specific health, say in like a shooter game or like a strategy game or so, and you have like systems on a specific avatar, or you just want people to spawn in a default Neos default avatar when they join in the world. You can stop users from spawning in their custom avatars as well, and then yeah. give them permissions as you go. But yeah, as I say, we did do a full series on permissions, and that is on our YouTube channel, so you can get that there. Mm -hmm. Can I have my admin back, please? Yeah, so you can have your admin back. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, regarding permissions as well, I'm just going to clear something up for people who are not aware. You mm -hmm. may have noticed I just had to ask Ryuvi for admin. Um, as team members, we don't get any special permissions in Worlds. We do not get admin. We come into a world as a guest, like anybody else. Yep, we are no different from your average folk, and if we want to edit your world or do anything like you, we are just like any other user. Yeah. And we um, can't override that either. Uh, Rosie, um, all three of us have got face tracking. So, let me... <laughs> where is it? Where's the camera? There it is. What See? camera? What camera? There oh, it is. Yeah, look, we all... Uh... Which Neos does support full eye and face tracking. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, um... As uh, Fuzzy huh? says, even Frooks can't override world permissions. Mm -hmm. Look at Frooks. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Next one's trying to make chicken. Yeah. Next one's no longer a chicken, so we can't abuse him as a chicken. <laughs> so we'll switch back to uh, Ryu. Mm -hmm, warm. Now. Toasty. Uh, smooth POV, there we go. So as I say, that right. pretty much covers the basic session permissions and world permissions. Mm-hmm. Next up, I... is... is our inventory. Is all users have an inventory here in Neos, as long as you are registered. And the inventory is... looks like this. By default, um, all users come with two default folders that you have access to, Essential Tools, and Neos Essentials. Inside these two folders are a lot of very handy things that can get you started and yep. well, have fun with us, really. I mean, if you want to show people around your um, inventory, yeah, I'd spawn out a legacy inventory and just show them what's in the Essential Tools. Mm -hmm. So if I get myself my inventory here that you can see, you can see I have Essential Tools and Neos Essentials here. Inside Essential Tools is a list of many of the tools, most, all, all of the tools of that the tools. we have available. Yes. Yep. At least oh. including a f At least the defaults, yes. Yes. And 
there's some more in the miscellaneous folder. But what all of these tools, you can you can click on them, by the way, to see their name, like the, the developer tooltip, the logics tooltip, light tip, etc. All of these tools have different functions and different use cases. And there's a few other folders in here which have some handy tools as well, like Aegis's folder, um, the JP tools, Polylogic's public tools, and some various community tools as well. There's also the brushes folder, which contains a bunch of different brushes, which are very fun and you can use to draw out and make things with. Try this one. I will try that one. <laughs> I like that. Clouds! Damn, Gary's mod's looking pretty mint these days. <laughs> Don't talk about Gmod around Ryuvi. Mm, I cannot undo that. <laughs> I got uh, it. There was a quick Thank question you. here, actually, that Conduit mentioned. You should note mm -hmm. the difference between admin and builder. Yeah, the difference between mm. admin and builder is admin can do world, is, you know, world saving, and they can change world settings and everything else, and the permission yes. levels, whereas a builder can't. Mm -hmm. Builders can't, for instance, adjust uh, a lot of these settings here. Like, they can't save changes, they can't get the world orb, etc. Whereas admin can. There is a default brush for clouds, Emerald. Yes, it's um, this one. There. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think I just made you that. Can... Yep. Made a mound vendor. There are also some, if you're, if you're wanting to make vines or add some rocks to your scene, there are also foliage brushes in the foliage folder. And there are rock brushes in the rock brushes folder. One thing to note also about the inventory is that up at the top here, it leaves breadcrumbs as you go inside various folders. And you can click on these to go back or skip all the way back to the root of your inventory. A quick handy... Uh, navigation tool. Yeah, very much so. Mm hmm I got the now. essentials open up here. Okay, would you like to discuss about the essentials, Aegis? Yes. Well, the the other folder that is within your inventory by deep is Neos Essentials. This folder is basically where you will find a lot of different assets that users can use, community content that we have helped shared with the community and lots of different gadgets toys and and tools various other more specific tools that people can use and resources even for users to learn and find help as well too within the os you can even see right here right in the uh, main folder here, you got like a camera that you can spawn out. Just like the streaming camera, you can manipulate it and use it and spawn it out. You got links to our Discord, moderation, Twitch chat. That is spawnable. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so it does that when you delete it. <laughs> And we also got some good accessibility tools right here, too, like the Mute Helper that I can actually grab and install on my avatar. If I put it on my tool shelf, open up my uh, menu menu, go to Mute Helper, and install it, it's permanently there. I can s Yeah, this one. Ah. Now I have two of them. <laughs> <laughs> and they both function. So I can go into new message. Hello. I can put in the last message real quick. Oh, quick replay. Oh yeah, there we go. Hello. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> as well as links and resources to our GitHub, YouTube, and such. Every time you uh, have a hyperlink, every time you have a hyperlink in Neos, say if you go to the Twitch streams, for example, 
I click it, you might not see it on my end, but every time you make a hyperlink in NEOS, you can set up a link, a URL link, and it will pop up a window, and it will show you, I think, Wraith, you might be able to... Yep. Okay, Wraith is getting the camera there. While I'm explaining, once Wraith brings out the uh, external link, this pop-up will always open up when you have a hyperlink showing the user what where it goes to and you can even have a reason why specified there you can type in like your own description of why the uh, um, yep and for example on the feature request I can click on that, and the reason is follow this link to submit a feature request. And you can resize it, click the uh, external link. You can either cancel or wait until the uh, timer goes down until you can open it. And when you open up a link, it opens up on the default browser that you have installed on your, or the default browser that you set on your computer. So. Yep. Yep. Figured those are some useful tips here, especially for those wanting to know any other resources that we can have. A couple of good, right off the bat, some folders to showcase. You got the mirror folder right here. Various different mirrors that have. Uh, well, sometimes they have like render settings and all that of resolution. You got avatars right here, various different community and curated avatars by us as well too. And you got the assets folder, which there's a variety of different assets, say 3D models, particle effects, textures, skyboxes. For example, if I go into 3D models, I can go into picture here and I can just spawn out this couch here. Hmm. Yeah. One quick note for anything in regards to the inventory, say you wanted to spawn out an item, just like with folders, you double click it. Mm hmm. There's that green stool. Just place that right there. Let's go back into the essentials. Now we also got facets too, in here too. This is definitely something important to show is that if you ever accidentally delete a facet, you can always find extra facets in here if you don't want to reset your dashboard. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's actually a good example right there. So I'll just take this FPS counter and I'll place it right there. Which one thing to note about the home screen here is all of these individual pieces are modifiable. You can change them and add things and create custom things and it will stay on your dashboard and persist. I can even make it big. Oh, whoops. There we go. The border is big, but the text is about the same size, so it auto scales. Thanks for the raid, Lemon. That's much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to note, at the moment, the materials folder is right here. You have a whole bunch of materials. I still have yet to go and move them over myself too, so... But yes, a whole bunch of assets that people can play around with. Mm -hmm. There's lots of assets in NES Essentials that can help you get started in making a world and otherwise. One thing to note, by the way, when it comes to editing your dashboard and the facets on it, is you do have to go into UI edit mode uh, to be able to edit the facet. And for most controllers that have buttons, it's the, the, the button you use to open their dashboard. You'll hold one of those and double click the other one and you'll be in UI edit mode and then you can aim at a facet, grab and move it around. 
When you're done in edit mode, you can do the same gesture again, hold down one dash button, and double click the other. Yep, as well as there's a button on the bottom as well too. Another thing to note is you you can see how the there's a, a grid behind this uh, this home screen here, and that lets you know that you're in edit mode. You will only see that when you're in UI edit mode, and when you're not, it will just be a solid black color as a background. A good indicator to know that you're in it, as well as there is a button that shows up underneath your dashboard telling you that you can exit UI edit mode. One thing to note, also going back to the inventory, is that throughout whatever you're selecting or looking at, we have these set of buttons at the top right of the screen. And down here, we have a handy-dandy image to showcase you what all of these are. Generally, if you're saving an item um, or creating a folder, that is this green Add button. If you're wanting to save your current avatar, which is the avatar you're currently wearing, it's the blue Download button. If you've selected an item in your inventory and you want to delete it, you use the Delete button, which has a confirmation. If you have shared a folder in your inventory, and you can tell if a folder is shared with the if folder has a little little blue flag on the top left. If you want to unshare a folder, that's what this unpublish uh, purple hand uh, icon is for. Now, consequently, if you want to share a folder and give it out so that other people can access the contents of the folder, it's the share button. One thing to note also on the topic of sharing is if if a folder is yellow, then that is a folder that is in your inventory, it is yours, it's it's actually there, that's the real folder. Whereas if a folder is orange, like this, that means that is a shared folder that has been saved to your inventory, and it's not it's it's hosted somewhere else, it's not your folder. Um and if you if it's not a folder that you own, you won't necessarily be able to add or remove items from it. Only the owner of that folder can. Shared folders in your inventory also do not count towards your storage amount. And anything within that folder. Yes. One thing to note as well is that uh, Essential Tools and Neos Essentials folders, they are orange, which means they are shared folders, and everything and everything in there does not count towards the storage of that you have. Now moving on, the blue cloud button is the change group button, and clicking that will allow you to see the inventories of any groups that you're in. Um, and we do have groups which allow you to add, remember, add and remove members, and it, it also groups come with a set amount of storage so that you can collaborate together on worlds and items, and it's a shared inventory space in, in essence. And this button allows you to view all of the group inventories that you have access to. Now, for some items in your inventory, like avatars, keyboards, and etc., you can click the pink heart icon to favorite that and make it default. Ah, Wraith brought up here is this is a good idea of what if you're in a handful of groups. In this case, Wraith is in quite a few here. You can you can go and click the cloud button and view all of these, and then double click on any of these to view that specific group inventory. In this case, the Cord Neos inventory. Now, if you want to get back to your actual inventory, that is the personal folder on the top left. Like so. Finally, if you have an avatar selected, which you can single click on any item to select it, by the way, then a yellow lightning bolt icon will show, and that is the apply avatar button. And if you just were to click that, then instead of having to spawn out the avatar and double-click into it, you can just click the lightning bolt to apply the avatar immediately. And it will overwrite your current avatar. There is one other button that shows up in specific when you're dealing with facets. So if you're wanting to spawn a facet and put it on your dashboard, you first have to save it to your inventory, and then a pink button, a, a lot like the heart, will show up there, and that will spawn it out in the special way that it's spawned out, and you can put it on your dashboard and go from there. 
One thing to note about the inventory, by the way, is that to save things to an inventory, you have to have a registered account. If you're currently in Nailis unregistered, then you won't be able to save uh, things to your inventory or add contacts. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you cover this one? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. What? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, the, the, one of the cool things like about like the way inventory works and like saving assets is Neos. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Love. Like, uh, you know, so much, like they duplicate like all the assets they're using. So say like I have like this avatar, I can save, uh, and this avatar has like you know it has the mesh, it has the textures. Um, so I make some like small modifications to it, but I don't change the texture and I don't change the mesh. Uh, I only, for example, add some things to it. I save a copy. You don't actually. It doesn't end up like using more storage for the assets that are shared. It only uses for extra storage for whatever is new and different. But if you have say ten copies of the same avatar, you and save the texture takes ten megabytes of uh, your story space. That's ten megabytes is only taken once, and it's kind of like uh, so you can you can feel free to save like save, saving lots of different like copies of like uh you know your avatar and other stuff without it without it like using way too much storage so this is, this is like a really like neat feature like uh for like how neos kind of stores and handles assets mm -hmm. the duplication is great because many times for my case say say you're working on an avatar and you are constantly making changes and changing. You've got lots of versions of that avatar saved in your inventory. <laughs> then only you won't use up, you know, ten times the space. You'll only use up the avatar space plus whatever changes and additions you might have made on whatever changes. So, mm. a, a like great if you're example. Like working, you can also save like have that really shots, like have your work in progress versions. And maybe like a good practice to kind of like you know like. So you don't like lose the changes, so like save all of them because uh, you don't have to worry about the it's taking too much of your storage. Mm hmm. And as Greg has shown here, he has a lot of versions of his avatar saved here. Um, however, if if the base <laughs> model and materials haven't changed throughout these, then all of those assets are only saved once instead of however many times this is. Same with ages. <laughs> yep. And you can see which one I favored it at the moment, too. Mm, that's actually a good uh, indicator, is as we were discussing earlier with the pink heart icon over there to set items as default, when you have an, uh, uh, an avatar in your inventory and it is your currently favorite avatar, it will have a pink background. The same applies to any other items you can favorite, like a keyboard. Say if I favorite this version of my avatar and I respawn... Give it a minute. Poof. Mm. Yep. Once for keyboards. Is it favorite keyboard? Yep. Because yes, you can you can change your keyboard. And as you can see, Aegis respawned, and he respawned as his new favorited avatar. And you can change mm -hmm. that on the fly, as just demonstrated. You do not lose any assets in that case, because these those assets that were used across all those various versions are also still stored in the cloud. Um, and as long as one instance of it exists, I believe the asset should still be there. Yes. Yeah, and also pretty much uh, the cloud will like, keep track of uh, which assets, like, uh, which, like, records in your inventory uh, are using those particular assets. And it will only delete that asset once kind of, all of them have been deleted. So as long as there's like one that's like using the particle asset, like it will it will be stored uh, in the cloud. 
there's like a lot of additional benefits. It's like like if you do make some modifications to your avatar, you and you save like a new copy, and it's let's say you spawn in a world, and Neos will only load the assets that are new to it, and it also applies to worlds. So say like you're a world maker, and you you make the world, and you know like people are using the world, then once you make some changes to it so like you add a few new things and you publish a new version of the world people don't need to enter download the entire world again all of the assets they already have a cache to just take cache and they only download like whatever whatever new changes you've made so like that also speeds up like uh, it speeds up like downloads of your world and it was even across the world so, like we have like you know creators like using say the same texture in multiple different worlds Neo will only cache it once and that way is also like you know using less storage in your system is the like the things that kind of like downloading faster as so you kind of go around and um and just generally it kind of like helps kind of con consider like resources and like that's how i use them rather than sort of like picking everything together like into like one big blob okay <laughs> definitely <laughs> well, So, did you guys have one more thing to cover before we start answering uh, questions for people? We yes. covered also uh, user safety permissions. Mm -hmm. uh, and in terms resource. of the dash, there is one more panel to cover here, and that is the settings panel, which allows you to adjust an assortment of settings, including your audio, uh, smooth turn settings, uh, your height. Your height as well, as well as things like uh, if you want to use your head direction for movement based on where your joystick is pointing, or if you want to move based on where your controller is pointing instead. Do note that these can also scroll, and you can scroll by clicking and dragging. I think only the right panel scrolls right now. This also is where you can, uh, you can adjust your input device and output device as well. Which is important if if your microphone is not being picked up, it's good to check the select audio input device panel here in the settings tab. Similarly, if you don't have audio, then the output device as well. So. Here you can also adjust things to to taste, like how fast you turn when you're when you're in smooth turn, and if you're not in smooth turn, how much you turn based on snap turning. You can also adjust how fast you fly when you're in no clip, which no clip, by the way, is a locomotion option. Hmm. Here is an example of the audio input device panel. So when you click uh, select audio input device, it will pop up this panel, giving you a list of all of your input devices. You can pick one and you can also choose to listen to the, to the device to make sure that it is functioning properly. When you found one that you want, you can just click off the panel. Other notable settings in here are controller vibration and haptic feedback, which are these two checkboxes here. Generally, if you if you don't like controller vibration or you're trying to save uh, controller battery, then you can disable these. But these have their uses, and you can feel haptics all over the place when you're hovering over buttons, and when you're you have a hand near someone, you can feel controller vibration there too. And one thing to note is that Neos has support for the B Haptics system, uh, the Haptic Vest and such. And if you are using the B Haptics Vest or any of the other B Haptics uh, items, you want to make sure that the Haptics Feedback button here is checked. Otherwise, you won't be able to, to feel it. And there's a bunch of other settings. Is there any other important settings that I think we need to cover here, Aegis? Um, I think Wraith was bringing out a window of the audio device. Mm -hmm. He did. Okay, so... One I thing to note that's... also, I uh, just noticed here, is that we have a built-in noise suppression filter for voice. That's so if you're was. in a noisy environment, you can check this, and it will attempt as best as it can to block out the noise in the background, and it tends to work pretty well. <laughs> However, if for some reason you're having an issue with voice and it's not picking you up, even though you're speaking clearly, then you might want to try disabling that and messing with the settings there. Mm 
Mm. And one thing to note specifically about these two values here, which is the noise gate threshold and the normalization threshold, is that as you adjust the noise gate threshold in specific, this on this facet above here, which we showed earlier, which is the, the mute nodes, and this shows you where your voice is, this vertical yellow line will show you the current noise gate value. And there is a, a smaller bar at the bottom, which is your raw audio, and then there's a larger bar up top, which shows you the volume of the of your voice as it's actually being sent to other users. And this noise gate, if, if your actual vo uh, volume is beneath your noise gate value, which you can adjust here, then it won't get transmitted. So using that in conjunction with the noise suppression filter is definitely helpful if you have, say, a loud fan on in your room. And I think for the important settings, that covers that. So, let's see. One, th one thing I think we should also cover, too, is locomotion. I just thought about it when you were talking about no clip being an hmm. option. Well, one thing to note, uh, as I just said, is we have different locomotion modes. And you can access that if you look at your context menu. There are a few options here, including locomotion. And if you click on locomotion, you'll get access to all of the locomotion modes currently available in the world, including physical or walk-run, flight, no-clip, teleport, and sometimes <laughs> if you can grab world, there's others too. And you can make your own custom locomotion modules as well. Right now, for example, I am in no-clip, which means I can fly and float around, collisions don't matter, I can go through anything and everything. Aegis is in... Uh, zero G. Zero G. You can and float I'm around in, and. Oh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in no clip. Mm hmm. If I go to fly, mm -hmm. say, say you want to. Teleport's handy. It, it definitely helps to Especially alleviate for those motion, motion sickness. sickness yes. Yes. The and flight locomotion module. Ooh, hello. <laughs> The flight locomotion module is like no clip, except a bit smoother, and you still abide by collisions. Like I, I can't go through this wall, for example, Whereas or down I through the floor. Whereas if I go into no clip, I can go through the wall. Ooh. And physical is standard physical, where you can walk, run, jump, etc. You can edit any of the parameters within the locomotions within the inspector as well, too, using the development mm -hmm. tooltip. Yep. Oops, and the glass. <laughs> As I say, glass. I think I think we've got just about everything covered there. There, I say if we head back over towards the desk, we can take some questions as well. And yeah, with so all this said, I think though, be... hmm? okay, you finish right. Okay, I was going to say with all that said, though, uh, I think we can generally do some question and answering now. I believe that's what you were going to say next. Uh, so we can head oh, back to the Oh, I was just going to say, we're, we're going to clear off all of the messages on the board right now. So if any previous questions that you had that we weren't able to cover, we because right now it's kind of a cluster, then you can re-ask your questions and we'll go through them one at a time. I and, am uh, just going to yeah. quickly look through them very quickly because I think I did see one that came up. Okay, we'll, just we can answer that one and then we can just clear it and then we can clear it. Yeah, no, that looks fine. Can you see it? We're clearing the questions now. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. All right. cool. So, in, you... in order to ask a question, just be sure to put a question mark next. Uh, at the end of your message. To... Yep, at the end of the message, and it should go through as a question, and we will uh, start taking any questions that you guys may have about uh, suffering Neos. I'll read them out for you guys, and you guys can answer them. Okay, so we got our first question from Rampa here. People asked about if the default avatar model is available somewhere for grabs, is it? Um, no, actually, funnily enough, it it's... I should, I should put that in Neos Essentials, because... It will be put in Neos Essentials after yes. the stream. Okay, Ooh. sounds good. We got another question from Paragon here. Oh, what about the methods of creation category? We didn't go over logics. <laughs> So, hmm. this stream, I don't believe that we're going to be able to go over fully logics, but we could no. cover maybe what logic is gonna say for, uh, for the future. Mm -hmm. We should cover it. Do you want me to go yes. over it? Yes, if you'd like. 
Yes. Okay, um, I'll so, give you the camera, Regis, oh, and you can go off over there then. Yeah, and there is a lot to cover generally. Like, the stream is kind of something that, I mean, we're trying to cover something in oh, more of a general there was, sense. There was There's... a quick question, by the way. Someone said, is there ASL hand gestures? Um, if you've got finger tracking, you can do ASL. Hmm. Neos supports finger tracking with the index, leap motion, and the Vive camera tracking as well, too, yes. which also works on the index as well. And I've seen people use, like, like a VR program that you can get the hand tracking from Quest tra hand tracking hmm. as well, too. I don't know the program off the top of my head, but it is a possibility as well, too. Mm-hmm. So on topic of logics, uh, with creation tools that we have available here in, in Neos, you can, of course, create things with uh, with inspectors. You can move objects around. Um, but a static world is, at the end of the day, it is not the most interactive. And logics, which is our node-based graphical programming language here in Neos allows you to uh, essentially program whatever you want. You can you can make things interactive. You can cause things to happen when you go somewhere or do something. Uh, if you can imagine it, generally you can program it with Disample. logics. <laughs> Disable. And I might as well crack it open as well too to showcase what logics looks like visually. This example, by the way, is a, a little mini helicopter game that uh, they just has been working on, for example, here in his spare time. All programmed within Neos with Logics. And this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what it can look like. What you program is ultimately up to you. Now, this logic specifically is for the script that makes this helicopter pick up objects with a little winch that extends up and down from the bottom. And Logics allows you to uh, work with events, you can cause things to happen, but you can also do things like play a sound, or do something uh, something if something is true, or do something else. You can have variables, and you can, you of course have access to a, a large assortment of mathematical operators and other things to essentially help you program whatever it is you want. And I can pack it all back up into the object. Mm -hmm. And it's all listed here. Everything thing to note, note as well is that Logics is not just limited to objects in the world. You can also have Logics on your avatar. Say you have an avatar that does some kind of special effect, then you can save it with your avatar. Aegis, for example, there has a grappling hook that he can fling himself around on. And Wraith here can squeak. <laughs> squeak, squeak. And depending on the scale... It gets lower or higher pitched. I love that as well though. As a flight this. system. You can fly around. I can fly around too. And all of this program is done without ever having to leave the platform. Wonder if I can okay. grab onto the suit. Uh, yes, I can. Okay. We Later. got a lot more questions <laughs> that we have to cover, you guys. So let's. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. All right. I'll spin on the ceiling fan okay. later. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> okay, so our next question is from Jex. We got, do you guys plan to simplify the menus and the amount of tools? Oh, my viewpoint is still on my, uh, on me. Okay, there we go. Hmm. Did you guys get that? <clears throat> Yes. In so, terms of the menus, we are currently in progress of updating some older menu items in the dashboard, for example, like the inventory and the file browser. Um, and the settings menu. Mm -hmm. As for simplifying, we are definitely trying to make it easier and more intuitive for users to use, of course. Do you have anything to comment on that? 
Isn't the one to like make like the basic like menus like much simpler for you? So like if you're like here like having to come in and socialize, um, you know, it's it's as easy as possible. But Neos is also like designed to be like you know very versatile too. So like there's probably gonna be more rules as you cannot go in because like there's gonna be lots of lots of different like things that cannot do. But I kind of figured like that's okay because like uh, we want to make it easy to find the tools that are specific for what, whatever like you're interested in. So that way uh, you can say like you want to do like power building. They can be like you know very simple tools, and we are seeing like people in the community gonna make some of them. Like say you want to like place trees, you just like literally shoot trees and they're all from the sky, and it makes it very fun and very easy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they have like you know tools that are like designed to kind of like do stuff you know like uh, boolean editing or there's like uh, stuff that makes it easy to kind of make objects spin there's tools that help you know build a uh, bit uh doing some like research and educational stuff so the tools themselves like uh there's probably going to be more and more as the time kind of goes but on the other hand it's also going to make it easier to like find the tools that are for like specific you know for a like, specific job and the general goal is like to kind of make it make it like you people are eased in a lot easier and you also have like you know sort of like a base like socialization layer and the socialization itself finding people finding your friends finding contacts finding worlds finding stuff all the basic stuff is as simple as possible and then like you can kind of like start diving into like you know the more complex topics like building and uh, all kinds of stuff around it yeah, I just noticed that question right there, but they didn't put a question mark. Is it also possible to make your own tools and combine several into a single tool that works just like you love? They're well, saying it. It. They're saying it is. It. So that it. wasn't a question. I just. Mm. Well, just uh, that was a I just, uh, um, yeah. Apologies um, yeah, for so... the audio there. By the way, he was not on broadcast. Oh. Um, he was You're fine. Also, mode, so that's been now been fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be yeah. sure to keep the questions though at one at a time, because I know that you guys want to answer these questions before they're ready, and let's not do that. So then keep things organized. Thank you. Uh, so Specs says, in fact, uh, this may be a good question. Are there any useful community tools for those who want VRC style gestures? There is a tool like that. Do you guys know what it is? Um, I know of it. I don't know if it's in. It's in our JP Publix folder. It's in, yeah, mm. it's in the JP Publix folder. It is a, a gesture board that you can spawn out. Yep. Um, I believe it's either. I believe it's in Renium's folder. It is. So in if Renium's you went to. Folder, yes. Yep. If you went to Neos Essentials and then uh, Public Folders and or Community Public Folders, and there should be in, under the JP Folders under the Community JP Folders. There's a Renium's folder, and it contains a menu that allows you to set up. And base gesture is similar to that of uh, your C's. So, good question. As well, I just made a uh, avatar gesture tooltip as well. Tool maker for uh, Actually, essential tools, community I'm just, tools. Um, yeah. I'm just going to stop. Hmm? Yeah, I guess a minute. Um, just regarding the avatar gesture tool, it's actually straight in the JP tools root. Okay, well, then there you go. That's where you guys can find it. Uh, so this next question is a pretty big one. Are mods allowed? So are mods allowed in Neos? Uh, the best thing yes, that is what the menu looks like for yeah. gestures. Uh, I will go over the mod. Um, but the best thing to say regarding the mods is there is an announcement on our Discord somewhere regarding our mod policy, which you can find on our Discord. Um, as, and then you can go on to wiki.neos.com and as i say just search for mods and that'll cover our mod policy on there sounds good okay and we got our next question here from emerald uh we're talking about the robot right alternative heads could be cool i'm not sure what you're talk talking about emerald so we're just going to skip over that um we also answered the asl hand sign gestures people have made uh asl and uh gestures here in neos which work pretty well you can also use a mute helper at any point too um so i i ben says uh will a text-based programming method for worlds be added at some point so i think that's a relevant question okay Freak says yeah, yes it's like not like specific like way yet like uh we're still kind of like you know thing like what is the best like long-term way to kind of add like that kind of like serving support the form we're kind of like heavily leaning towards is WebAssembly. 
because uh, that would allow for like lots of different languages. You could, you know, even compile things like C, C++, you could compile like interpreters for Lua and so on. So that one, uh, it would would provide like probably like the best kind of like uh, bang for the buck in a way. But we're still like not 100% kind of certain. We're kind of like watching some of the technologies kind of develop and seeing, you know, like a, what what is the most viable option that's going to provide good security, that's going to provide good like performance, that's going to provide, you know, good like, good flexibility, and it's going to be like well supported into the future. So, personally, I think it's very likely going to be WebAssembly in the end, but uh, it's not like it's not like locked in yet. So, still things might like uh, the plans might still like change, but. Yeah, I'll definitely, like I'll definitely be. That. Yeah, I'll definitely help out programmers to write out things quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, so Puzzy says, hey, that's something different." No, okay. Uh, so Huey says, "Is there a VRC equivalent to Fizzbones in Neos?" Yes, there is. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, have we do have bones, physics, and you can actually grab them and <laughs> soak them around. Ah, you can put them on any arbitrary <laughs> object as well too. So, there's also pizza, previous tutorials that we've done uh, that actually shows and goes about on our uh, YouTube page about how to add uh, dynamic bones to your character. I recommend going through that tutorial because you can still um, do that in the same way, even though that it's pretty old. We've been having uh, avatar interactions with dynamics for quite a long time now. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was so added, like our... two years ago, something like that. Yeah, it's been a while. So Cold Man says, what exactly remember. does the mesh tooltip do? Can anybody answer what exactly the mesh tooltip does? The mesh tooltip is the counterpart to the material tooltip. Uh, with the material tooltip, you can use the tooltip, the gray one on the table there actually, um, to get a material from an object and apply it elsewhere. The mesh tooltip allows you to get a mesh from an object and apply it elsewhere. You know, it also allows you to get mesh orbs, just like how you can get little material orbs. Like if I, for example, aim at this desk with my material tip, grab it, I get a material orb, which is the material, and then I can apply it on something else. Like Aegis. Your hair is stone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing applies for the mesh tip in this case. Oh. I'll make you stone. Oh. Yes, you can be stone. Boop. No oh, statue of Rafe now. <laughs> it's it's it. Boop. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for that answer. Uh, we got another question here from uh, Snake Man says, "Can you provide that link now? Can someone provide that link now? I guess that was for something else." I think that was the link for um, the wiki there for the mod policy. Mm. Probably. Oh, I see. Did anybody give them that link or? Um, I think we have that link. Um, I think Earth Mark. Oh, there you go. Green's got it. Thanks, Green. There you go. Oh, thank you very much for that. Yep. Uh, Light says, uh, looking for a quick start guide to uploading. So, presume uploading an avatar, and if you currently, uh, if you are trying to import an avatar with Unity packages, we don't currently support, and we're, well, we don't support Unity uh, package importing directly. However, if you extract the raw files of that avatar, say uh, FBX or whatever file format it is, including its textures, you can import those files directly into Neos and it will set them up. Yep. Yep. Our next question that we got here is from Spacebird. Is it possible to for your hands to collide with things? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you we can, were kind of just doing that have, right now. You, this. you can actually have a push button that you have to press only via physical touch, for example. I don't advise that because that is a very bad way of alienating desktop users. Mm -hmm. Yep, and Matt Slime says, in Contacts Plus, a person I uh, block can still join, but they are the friends of, fr of that friend. Is a thing like that supposed to happen? Uh, yeah, you can ban them from the session, however, and then they won't be able to join. If they are banned you from your session, they can't join. But if if you're in a session that that you know, say your friend is hosting that session, they could join that session if they're friends with your friend, but you may have them blocked. Yep, and uh, Rusky is asking about support for custom shaders. We don't really have support for custom shaders, but we do have a huge list of different shaders that are already here instead of Neos, uh, such as ZXC Tune, 
and PBS and uh, Pride Planner and a whole bunch of different ones that you can go you can through also, through the material. And a fresh shader. You can and also watch crypto for like using the logic select like programming system and it like lets you create like rules well. of the effects that people are like use shaders for as well. So there's like a certain level of flexibility to that. Uh, it is something also that we would un want to add like in the future, uh, but it requires like some bigger changes, like a uh, switch mm -hmm. of custom like rendering machine where you have like full control over like the pretty much like the entire engine so we can like add like more of complex features like that in a way that's safe and that's like uh, designed to be like very yep. long term so like you know like we uh, so we can like make sure that like people's content doesn't break us we kind of keep developing the project there is another one actually here just going on about that most people are still talking about shaders but as i say i'm going to jump quite a few questions um, because we are talking about textures right now someone said is rim light a thing in neo shaders we do have a rim yes a, a, a rim material Yes, there is both a metallic and specular variant of the rim uh, material. Actually, Aegis, just put that back in front of your face. I can put the camera on you for a minute. There we go. Okay, so I might as well just go over like all the different uh, types of materials we got here. So, in each one of these, you can also edit every aspect of it too. So, say for example, I'll take a regular PBS metallic here, and you got the material orb right here. And you got the material right here as well, too. Feel free to apply the materials to me, by the way, as you're showing them off. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, by default, I can actually click on this little box here. And I can change the material live. You got, like, the red, green, and blue. This is alpha, so it's, like, transparency. And this is, well, gain, as in kind of, like, bloom. So I'm going to kind of... Make it kind of like a teal. Make it transparent, so we can make it glass if we wanted to. So, we also got here a bunch of textures. I can get to that real quick, too. And I can make it metallic, or smooth. I can even go into here, change it to blend mode to cut out. Well, right now, it doesn't show anything because uh, well, it's invisible. But if I switch to transparent... You can see it's well you can see through it additive makes it glow and multiply your usual like uh unity material setup and all that right now and i can set this <laughs> back to opaque set this to like a normal color uh, there we go and let's put a texture on you Example in the essentials, assets, textures, materials. Let's add like a noise texture on you. This is also or a good no. demonstration of how you can apply textures to a material as you're loading in your avatar, for example. So this one looks better. Let's add a normal map onto there. We'll change the scale. Whoa. I can even change the tiling of the texture as well, too, by tapping in the numbers. Changing the tiling. Now you look more Very like nice. clay right now. Mm. Just uh, be sure to let them know also that they can even convert those materials as well and in the material tool. So then if they want to be a different shader, uh, then they can do so as well. So I would suggest showing them. You kind of did it uh, pretty fast there. Oh. So yeah, you want actually, to open I should and go probably be using a to default you. tool as well too. I'm using yeah. a multi tool, so let's take the material. Yeah, show them that you can convert. Show them the converting of it, like converting mm -hmm. it to like let's say Zixi too. Yep. Not only that, but I can take a multi or uh, a material tool, point out something that I want to get the material of, and say if it's not an avatar or the material, I can't get it. But if it's like a material here, I can take the material. By pressing secondary, it takes the material you're pointing at. So in this case, I'm going to grab this and take the material and open my context menu and go to convert to. And I can change it to, say, rim specular this time. 
Now you can see there's like a nice rim color going around. You can change the color. Let's make it kind of like a blue. Let's make him like a frost golem of some sort. <laughs> that looks pretty neat. That looks like snow. Like... Kind of snow. Yeah. Snow. So just just to answer these two questions, I mean, though, I believe that. Uh, that Huey and Light was asking, they were saying, is Poyu compatible to so the Poyomi shader? I don't believe that we do have the Poyomi shader no, yet. No, we don't have, we don't have Poyomi, no. We have Zixi2 oh, cool. instead. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, do a, um, do a Zixi2 on me with um, an outline. So let's yeah, go that's create like a new. Zixi2? It's a little bit bright because of the lighting in here, but that's all right. You can always tone that down, and we can find the outline, which is under, okay, outline right here. Let, we can change the width by clicking on this here and typing in a width here. Ah, that looks neat. Hmm. Looks like a ghost or a spirit of some kind. I can't see shit. Oh? <laughs> I've got oh. a big black line right down the middle of my eyes at the moment. Oh, uh, it's the near clipping <laughs> for that <laughs> avatar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not that I, I mind while we're color. showing off. I can see the camera, so that's all that matters. Oh, now he's made it red. Now it's blue. Oh, purple. Purple. Actually, Aegis, make me black. Because that will show this off even better. Hold on. I'm going to have to uh, select you real quick. And open up the material. Ah, uh, body. While he just is doing that, I'll go over some other questions that we got here. Orange says, worth mentioning Pearl Prime's huge collection of YouTube tutorials. Absolutely. Uh, there is a tutorials folder inside go. of the Neos Essentials. If you go into tutorials underneath there, you can actually search up a lot of Pearl Prime tutorials, as well as they are on his uh, YouTube channel as well. Oh, you want to look for that... his tutorials? Oh my god, my eyes! <laughs> <laughs> Don't blind him. Hey, uh... Um, by the way, I'm just going to give chat a bit of a laugh here. By the way, chat, I was on about my uh, point of view here. Uh, there you go. That's what I see oh, right oh, now. Oh. <laughs> I can see what you're yeah. seeing it's like... That is literally it's what like I see. Vision. So... <laughs> sure, that's interesting. You can see the ambient occlusion through it. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we uh, got another unique question here. I'm a hand says, I'm just wondering, as a person that played VRC and so at some point Second Life, are you able to quote unquote live with another player basically sharing a load in slash home world? Yeah, um, you could do that with a headless, would be the best way. Yep, so either headless or also saving that world orb as your default home. In the same way that you save avatars, you can actually save a world orb to your inventory, select that world orb, and then hit the heart button. That will make it your home world instead of Neos. And you can do that to any world that's either published in Neos or that somebody's created. Yeah. So a good oh. question by Emma Hand. Um, the, I know there was a question about favorite materials. I, def I think one of mine definitely is Fresnel. Now, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the say my out. favorite is um, actually, I'm gonna switch into my I'm gonna switch back to my regulars for a minute. There we go. I'd say my favorite is the triplaner because it makes me be lazy with I UVs. Do, like, cool <laughs> oh, triplaners, yeah, triplaner is so cheap, it's great. Yeah, it's a cheap, yeah, ghost <laughs> performance wise, it's very Most. cheap. Now, do it the inverse. Oh, yes. I'll that make was really it cool. Dark in the middle, and then 
glowing on the edges. So Wraith, um, this question would probably be inclined to you putting on a specific type of avatar, because Fox Topic is saying, are you able to create toggles to be able to have your multiple clothing for out outfits on your character? Yes. So, um, absolutely, actually, yes, you can. And Wraith can show you that. that. Actually, is my Fox Box. I'm just going to switch over to my Fox Box in a minute. Uh, I'll leave the, I'll leave this regulus out, giving you a plate around with it. Yep, so the Wraith is going to get into their character and show you with their hand menu that they can absolutely put on multiple different forms of clothing yep. and outfits. Um, so if I switch to third person for a moment and put the camera on me, I'm going to move over here out of the way. So what I can do here is I've got a radial menu on my avatar and I can go into avatar control clothing i want a jacket i want to take my scarf off put my t-shirt on and yeah you can pretty much do full clothing menus and everything with um menus like that but yeah absolutely um we, yeah. Do, we do have a full tutorial by the way on how to do uh, context menus which is no i'm not cute shut fuzzy i'm not cute um which all um go over how these are all made and it is done with zero logics it's all done with components and that is on fruitsis's youtube channel under the workshop wednesday playlist and i will put our camera back over Absolutely. here so our next question that we got here is from lights i see maps any way of masking yes um, who's who would be best covering masking? One of either Aegis or Ryuvi. Hmm. Well, we do support masking in both UI with UI masking, and we support masking as in with stencils with uh, specific shaders. Uh, with masking in in making UI elements, you can say mask. The, the, the Twitch chat over there is a good example, is that that chat is scrolling. It exists above the top of the panel, but you don't see it because it's masked off. As for with stencils, we do have general stencil support, so you can have things only display behind certain things, and etc. Nice. This rifle, for example, has like a sight that you can only see the little laser on it through. Um, that... I can line it up. There it is. Yeah. Okay, so uh, our next question is from uh, Killman. Says, "Does Neos what? VR support OSC?" No. We, the, if you want to nope. do, it okay. depends what you want to do. But with regards with OSC, we don't support things like that. Our eye tracking and facial tracking is native to the platform. Um, if you want to say put something in like a heart rate meter, you could use WebSockets. We have full WebSocket support in Neos. Nice. And Raffle says, uh, are you guys official developers? Yes, we yes. are yes. official developers here of Neos VR. Yeah, um, um, uh, as I say, we'll, we'll go over, we'll quickly go over what our roles are. Nexlin is our producer. Oh, he's that side. Nexlin is our producer. Hello. Nexlin, along with myself, we deal with Twitch streams. Um, Nexlin does a lot more of it than me, but I tend to deal with the YouTube channel. Um, Aegis and Ryuvi are our content team. They deal with the awesome stuff like the Metaverse Training Center and some of the cool worlds that you guys check out when you first come into Neos. Fruxius, the yellow dog man, he's the guy who what? created Neos. He wrote most. He, he wrote all the code. He makes it work. I'm a. Model. I'm one of our moderators. Um, I wrote our moderation ticket system, and I also deal with the Twitch streams. And I'm also well. I'm I'm probably the I'm 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 the one that wears many hats in this team. I've noticed. I wear lots of yeah. hats, what? so mm -hmm. I deal with a lot of different things. Okay, somebody give him the hat right now. Should I turn off Chat Command so they can give you that awkward hat? <laughs> you, you can't. I take it, it, it as a challenge. Oh um, yeah, give give get oh. Fruxis is challenging you right now. Well, he right can have, That's he a lot can, of hats. He can have all the hats. But yeah, the cyan... <laughs> just to let someone know, I noticed someone mentioned something about the chat commands. The cyan Twitch chat does not have commands in it. The green Twitch chat oh, is a safe Twitch chat. And the purpley blue Twitch chat is the full fat Twitch chat. 
<laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so we just got a couple more questions. These are the last questions that we're going to be answering for today. And mind you guys, don't worry if you didn't get any of your questions answered inside of here, because we are going to be having this world open for users to be able to join and come inside of here after the stream is done. So uh, don't mind if you can have things answered, because we will be here. Um, but our last uh, questions for Let's get an update at some point to uh, like this bones has i i.e angle limits bone bending properties so basically improvements to uh this bones at some point i would believe that we would um it's a little bit lower on the priority list uh but i'm sure it can be planned to have some more additional updates added into uh fizz bones and what it can be Ramper, used to add more we were going to cover that before we finish the stream you weren't being ignored don't worry Yep, and Matt Slan says, so the default gesture from VRC, is there a way I can give it to someone to quick equip it like a the mute chat? For default gesture, is that possible? Hmm, that's a good question. I... Is it in... mm -hmm. Yeah, next no? one Anybody? was cutting no? in and out. Yes, I did notice mm. that. Oh, I... I'm sorry, did I, do I have to reread re no, it? No, 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 you're fine now, but you were cutting out a bit in and out earlier. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, so no answer to that one? No, none, none that I can think of off the top okay. of my head right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Cyphex so says, uh, any resources where we could learn to do those toggles? So the toggles that you were doing with your hand, any uh, resources? Yes, um, as I said, if you go onto YouTube, and search for Workshop Wednesday Neos VR, or search for Fruxius, or search for the Neo, the yeah Fruxius' YouTube channel. You'll find a playlist called Workshop Wednesday, and on there we have some tutorials for how to do the contacts menus. We also have, I do believe, tutorials for snappers as well. And there is also tutorials, and I saw someone mention this actually, which is going to allow me to kill another question. Someone asked about um someone who had uh, multiple dev tips we also covered that on how to make your own tooltip of how to combine them into one big fat monster <laughs> nice okay and we got our last uh three questions here um any sort of protection for avatars prevent theft of models yes absolutely there is um, uh there yes. is there is avatar protection hey actually maybe let's go over mm -hmm. here all right. Um, can you try? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spawn out one of my other avatars. Mm -hmm. And Ryuvi's going to try and get in it. I'm going to try and get in, and it does not let me, no matter as, how much I try. Try and break into it. All right, let's see. I'm going to open this avatar and an inspector. Go to the root. Let's see. Maybe I can try in and go and break this protection. We'll go down all the way to the bottom until we find simple avatar protection. Hmm, I'm going to try and get rid of that. It deletes the avatar. And then another thing is as well, again, if you noticed, when... Aegis was, when I was on the desk and Aegis was messing with my textures, he couldn't pull the textures off my avatar. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. So if I were to spawn out my Toon Fox, as an example. Oh, I have my late, it does help if I don't have my laser turned on. But if you go into that inspector now, mm -hmm. and if... When Ryuvi goes into the centered root and under my main body, if they grab one of those textures right now and try and pull it out, it won't let them. Mm -hmm. I, however, can grab that same texture, pull it off to the side, and open it. I mean, this is simple protection. It's not anything advanced. It is called simple avatar protection because it is simple. But if someone tries to steal the av avatar... By deleting the protection, it'll self-destruct. Mm -hmm. 
and you cannot save it into your inventory, it prevents it. And yeah. if somebody yes. leaves their avatar in your world, it will not save with the world. Yeah, actually, if, if someone leaves your world and they have left an avatar, protected avatar, in the world, it will actually delete once they leave the world. <laughs> that too. So yeah, there is basic protections on avatars. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got just our final few questions. Um, we're not going to be taking any more questions, though, you guys, after these few questions. Um, so we got two more. Uh, Scooby says, last time I was there, I saw someone using a custom logic tool. Is there a tutorial on how to make my own tools? That's what there I are definitely a lot of tutorials. That's... Yep, we already answered that question. Mm -hmm. um, and for our last question, Kiwi says, can you bind objects to an avatar's bones? So that's the last question. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, technically, these sunglasses right now are attached to my head at the moment using a snapper. Or, well, the thing that snaps the glasses to my head is connected to, well, my head. And I can snap it yeah, to my head. Like arm something. Just, um, and Ferg's just going to attach this. something to his arm. So I'm just going to attach this to my elbow. Oh, Grisa, that is elbow. horrible. Oh goodness, I saw what they said. Don't, don't ah. dump some avatar protection on your logic. <laughs> avatar protection yeah. on every every node. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> That'd be hell. Okay, well that kind of covers our questions uh, for today. And like I said before, you guys can join us here inside of the world after we are done ending off the stream. Um, and... Uh, yeah, everyone here is amazing. Thank you so much for all these wonderful brand new faces that are coming here inside oh, of Neos. Yeah. It's been mm -hmm. a pleasure helping you guys all out, and thank you for being so kind and respectful as well. Uh, we were very surprised to find that most people that were coming in were being very positive, and uh, we really appreciate that and being kind to each mm -hmm. other. Yeah, most definitely. It's been it's been awesome. As I say, we will have this world open. Um, just as I say. You may have noticed as well, the, the team are running around right now. We are trying to help people as much as possible where we can. Um, if you are having problems with something, please go into our help channel on discord.gg forward slash neosvr. And you can send a at, to, you can go at mentors and a mentor will try and help you. Or one of our, as I say, awesomely helpful community will come help you. You, Neos VR, can I make you big? I don't know. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah we, we can all be big. <laughs> yeah, um, just to cover something as well oh. now, actually. Yeah, I was about to get through to that. Um, Rampa had mentioned something earlier, which was to do with uh, dashboard and modifications in dashboard and stuff. You can't do that. There is some of the things that in desktop mode you cannot do that you can do in VR mode, unfortunately. Um, I need yep, to... and also you guys, uh, uh, anyone who's new here, we also do streams every single Friday as well. So be sure to join us in uh, while we do our community showcase stream at the end of the month for this Friday. And that Ooh. is at 3 p.m. PST. And if you haven't already, please join our Discord, discord.gg slash neosvr. And that's where you can get announcements and more information about neos. Yes. Um, as I say, mm -hmm. and we'll return in two in a in a um two weeks with the workshop mm -hmm. by yeah, next, then next wednesday no not next wednesday next oh, next oh, wednesday, it's wednesday. Two weeks. oh the next next one okay two weekly weeks. we do the workshops bi-weekly so we'll be returning back to our usual schedule next week which will be covering um what were we going to cover again it was um Dynamic Assets. variables. Dynamic variables, oh, dynamic variables. Dynamic variables and cloud variables. So we'll mm -hmm. be covering that. As I say, we had we did a quick change of schedule last minute just to help cover basics again for our new users that were coming in. So yeah. And as I say, thank you all for, as Snack says, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. What's the plan for thank Friday you, next? That's great. 
plan for Friday is community showcase. So we're going to be showing off really cool items uh, as well as uh, cool worlds that have been built out by our community that we figured are to be showcased. Uh, definitely uh, see us there because we're going to be venturing into the lost city of Atlantis. So oh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's a good map. That sounds awesome. Yep. Okay. Oh, this, is, this, is, this is the recreated city of Atlantis because the actual original city of Atlantis got actually lost. Yeah. What did you do? Uh, <laughs> uh, what did you do with it, Fruits? Where did you lose it? It's true. Well, how so did you lose a city? You get lost in Neos. How did you lose well, a city? Crashed. Yeah, it crashed. crashed <laughs> and, and like the whole state of the world, it, it didn't like it. It didn't get like saved, so it was all lost. You're supposed and to. And one of the reasons, like, why. You're supposed. No, Frooks, you're supposed to save while you're working. You're supposed to save periodically. So at least then you've got a fallback. Yes. Did you not, did you not save. do any saves while you were save. working? No, this wasn't mine. This is the creator gem. But this yeah. is very early on. This is like a few years back. <laughs> this is actually one of the, and that was actually the reason I implemented like when when something happens, you know, like when a world crashes, and you just safe. like dump the state of the this world isn't... into a drive. So, so like even if it crashes, <laughs> you can recover the data. And the and the mm. city of Atlantis is literally the reason that feature got implemented. It's because <laughs> like. People are like working on that one, it's crashed and it actually got lost. We don't have any chickens here, we only have a turkey. What? Anyway, we are gonna go now. <laughs> Aegis! Yep. And are we gonna be raiding? Are we <laughs> yes, gonna be raiding anyway? Uh, we'll find... we this, shall this find... This actually happened. Cool. And that is just, actually just, why just, the just, feature just, is important. Shush, 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 shush! <laughs> God, we're never gonna get off the air at this rate! <laughs> but yes, we are gonna go find Love you someone. All. We're gonna go find someone to raid. So goodbye everyone. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye. 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 Bye.